Hi, this is Ted from the Devils in the Detail. And this week we've got this little treasure that some of you might like. It's a Ferrari 308 GTS and it's come in for some cosmetic restoration. Now, the car is going to be repainted in a year or two um, to get it back to as perfect as possible. But for the time being, we're just going to see what we can do to freshen this up. Now, as you can see, it looks quite glossy and quite nice, but it has got its issues. So, let's uh, put the light on. And as you can see, being black, it's uh, had got the usual swirling. But it has had paint work in the past and it's very, very frosty. I've removed some of the badging from the back so that uh, I can get into polish where the badges were. When we get round to the sides, it's had plenty of repair work um, around the car. You know, it's had a, a long life and it's probably been eventful. So there are some marks from the repairs. Um, let's see if I can uh, pick some of them up. Probably not with my camera skills, but there's flatting marks um, apparent in the paintwork. And generally not the best finish you've ever seen. We're going to have this back at a later date so that I can paint these mirrors that have just been purchased. These mirrors, second hand, cost £2,000 um, and at a later date I'm going to be painting those. Generally the car looks the same all over. Um, if I was a bit better with the camera I'd be able to show how frosty the paint actually is. Um, we've also got some issues with micro blisters. Um, I'm not going to be able to repair those, um, but they're apparent, you know, in numerous places over the bonnet. Got a few chips and bangs which I'll be touching up during this process. And I'm sure, you know, the, the paintwork isn't great. It looks glossy, but when you start looking at it, it's uh, just got no luster and no depth. So some bad scratches here there that you could see but it's a car of an age and you know they're bound to have this sort of damage you know nothing lasts forever but I'm sure that um, with a little bit of love this week we're going to be able to improve it. I mean, there's, there is scratches, there's scratches all over it, but we can only work with what we've got. But we're certainly going to try and do our best as usual. And this is why the chap that owns this car, we did the red Ferrari for him. Um, and he was pleased with that and wants me to try and do the same with this. So, we've already 
done the wash and claying and to be honest some of the marring in here it was probably done by the clay barring because that's what happens well I've also got to repaint the uh, the vinyl that's on the roof because that's just looks like a matte finish now um, so I'm going to repaint that and uh, the saving grace is that the the majority of the plastics and the uh, louvers are okay so they'll be masked off I haven't got to do anything with those and uh, the wheels are going to be refurbed at a point later you know when it leaves there so there we have it and I'll show you a bit more of the process as we go along. Um, this is the car that made me fall in love with Ferraris, you know, when I first seen it on Magnum PI. And, you know, I have got a love for them. And now I'm going to show it the love back. So there we have it, that's what we're starting with. Let's see what we can do with it. So I'll see you a bit later. I'm gonna get on with uh, masking off. See you soon. Good morning, I'm Ted from The Devils in the Detail. As you probably know, if you're watching this, you've been uh, watching my work on uh, Facebook or YouTube. And you'd know that I've got this Ferrari 308 GTS in. And there's a number of issues that I'm having to deal with. Um, start off with the paint work. It's black and it's really soft paint. And with soft paint it wants to hold the paste and when you're wiping it off it mars the paint so it's really difficult to get a really clean finish now the biggest issue above and beyond the scratches on this car is the solvent pop now it's got a very frosty finish and this is caused by um, the solvent gassing out and they pop and it leaves millions and millions of little um, tiny bubbles that have burst and it appears as uh, like a frosty finish so I need to in other circumstances I'd probably flat the car to remove them and then uh, repolish it from there 
I haven't got the budget to do that on this car and I certainly haven't got enough time. I've only got it for a week. Um, so I've just got to do the best I can with what we got. So the process that I've, I've been doing the, the back panel and this is the biggest panel on the car apart from the, well, it's bigger than the bonnet. And so it's always really important to get the biggest panel as, as good as you can. So what I'm having to do, uh, initially I was intended doing a two stage polish on it, but that's unfortunately, I'm not gonna get away with that. So I'm having to cut uh, the scratches and the lacquer pop off using uh, an aggressive um, compound. And in this case, I'm using a uh, super heavy cut, uh, 300 compound men's earner, as I always use. Um, now, if I try and cut it fast, basically the heat dries the compound out. Um, the finer you go, the more oil that's in the compounds and, and you can use them longer. But in the heavy cut, there's obviously more heavy grit than lubricant. So basically when I'm cutting, this. If I was to try and cut it fast, the heat builds up, it rolls the grit into tiny balls and then we're left with um, bits of paste flicking off in little balls but worse than that it actually leaves marks in the paintwork and being soft every time you wipe it it just marks it again and then you've got to cut it again. So I'll be cutting this um, with the heavy cut but I'll be really slowing the polisher down now yeah it's gonna take two or three times longer um, cutting this out and it probably take three or four pass or sets to remove the scratching and the solvent pop but at the end of the day you know this isn't a race it's about getting the finish so if it takes a bit longer it takes a bit longer now once the first stage cuts, when I've removed what I can of the solvent pop and the scratches, then we're gonna to have to go at it with a medium uh, polish with a different head and start refining the paste that's embedded in uh, the paint now, um, start refining that out. Then when we get to the last stage, um, I'm gonna use a technique you know and basically it's called water polishing um, because even when you've got a finish you wipe it with a microfiber and it leaves marks just just wiping down it doesn't matter if you soak it in panel wipe um, it, it marks it so later on I'll try and show you how I achieve an acceptable finish it's never going to be 100% um, but it's still going to be very good um, but I'm going to try and show how hot how I do it it's not saying every other detailer does it and some detailers you know that already do this so you know I'm not on my own it's nothing special it's just that we've all got our own techniques of doing these things um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to put the polisher on here this is going to take you know this is going to be a boring video um, but it will show you know that the time it takes uh, to correct some of these things it isn't like swing the polisher around a few times and get rid of the defects because you're putting in defects by trying to remove defects and then we have to refine them out um, just on soft black paint and dark coloured cars the, you know this isn't on its own there's lots of cars with soft paint this has been painted so I don't understand why it should be so soft and, you know I expected it to be you know like a normal you know run of the mill car that was quite easy to do um, but that's on me you know I mean I should have checked before I had the car in um, just means a little bit more work um, and a little bit more effort um, but we'll get there in the end. 
So I'm going to stop talking and I'll, I'll just show you initially um, the first sort of a cup a minute and and but it's going to take me five, ten, fifteen minutes to do um, enough sets, you know, to actually remove the scratches and the lack of pop. And you know, it'll take what it takes. Now, in between every single set, the pad will be cleaned so that there's no build-up of um, compound in the pad that will leave squiggled marks in the paint. So I, I blow the foam pad off after every set. And then, um, you know, I, I don't I want to minimize any of the damage that we create. So I'm going to stop talking now and um, I'll just change the angle of the camera so you can see. And I'll just, I'll do a minute so that it doesn't bore you to tears and to show you the sort of speed that we have to do um, to make the compound work properly and, and cut rather than just get off get bald we have to clean it out start again and we don't get the amount of time we need to cut so i'll just change the angle of the camera We'll call that the first set and the reason I've blown off the dust particles is because at the minute you rub them, they're going to mark. I've used the compound until it's really diminished the particles fully and now I can lightly wipe down just to check to see how much of the scratching and the lack of pop there's still scratches that I need to work on. So this is gonna probably take four or five full sets. 
um, to just get rid of the scratches. But I thought I'd show you that technique um, for the first cut. Then I'm going to, when I start the next um, stage, I'll show you what I do with that. And then when I get to the final stage, I'll show you how I do that. And you'll be able to see how you achieve a good finish, um, but basically how much we have to do to get that finish. So I'll see you on the next one. I've just finished the cutted stages. I've been using a foam with a firm green pad. And now I'm going with a medium cut polish uh, from Menzerna on a microfiber and try and refine some of the marks out that we've left with the cutting. So I'll do some of the refinement with this second stage and then we'll have a look, see what's left to get out after that. Right, this is the second stage of polishing. Just spread some compound around. Well, we'll call that our first set. Now I'm just going to wipe off as much of the material. I mean, this will be panel wiped as well, but at this stage. I just want to make sure we're getting rid of some of the marks that we've left in. Now to the eye, this is really looking glossy. So, I think what I'll do, I'll take the camera out of the tripod 
and we'll get the light on and we'll actually see what we've achieved and if I do it straight from here you know I haven't doctored anything and this is the first set so let's have a look now I don't know if you can see because I've got the camera around the wrong way we've still got marks that are left from the polisher these are finer but we still need to remove them because as soon as the sun hits it they'll show up so I'll just get myself ready I'll do two more sets with this uh, medium cut and then we'll have a look at the doing the finishing right I've just finished doing uh, four sets on this panel and to the eye it's extremely glossy I'm now going to put the light on it to show that it isn't quite there yet these are the marks that have just been left with me panel wiping the panel off so now I need to get rid of those now you imagine these have been left by the microfiber that is lubricated with panel wipe and that's to remove the product but it's leaving these fine scratches or marring that are going to show up so I'm going to prepare for the last stage and I'll show you what I'm going to do hello I'm just preparing myself for the last stage to try and get these fine scratches out what I've done I've taken a fine black a soft black um, finishing pad I've added five dots of finishing compound Menzerna 3800 and then I've sprayed the pad with water and spread the water and the paste together I'm now going to blow off the excess with the airline Now, although that's damp, it's not soaking wet. Now, I'll take this round. And see if I can uh, show you the procedure. All we're doing is exactly the same as what we've done previously.
so I'm just going to take the airline and blow out the pad. I'm doing this for um, the filming purposes because I just uh, left it quite damp. Marking off what was put on there. I think because this is going to take probably about another five minutes to complete. I'll bring you back and show you the results so that you don't have to sit there watching all this. Right, I've just wiped it down and uh, let's see. Now, it's not perfect by a long stretch, but you can see a million times better. The scary thing is the first time the car. Right, I've just finished doing the last stage and just going to show you the results. It's not perfect, there are still some marring off the microfibers. I mean, these have been, uh, it's been wiped down using new microfibers and panel wipe and it's the microfibers that are leaving the the marring this car is used on a regular basis and he washes it himself so the first time it's washed being this soft it's going to have scratches back hopefully not as bad as the ones that i've took out but it is one of them things you know you've got a budget to work to and you can only get it you know given the time you know to a certain level um like i say the problem being if i get it better than that you'll be frightened to touch it um this but it's got rid of the scratches it's got rid of the lack of pop um it looks fantastic from three foot and that's all he wanted so i'm going to move on to another panel now and just keep going through the same process so i'm not going to bore you again as i go around the car unless there's some issues that i want to point out but we'll see it at the end, eh?
where this has been re-sprayed, all this top edge is just been really left with dry finish. I'm just trying to take the dryness down so that we can get some gloss. Because it's close to the moulding, using an orbital, it's factoring into the moulding all the time and I've got a more control with the with the mini rotary so that's the reason I'm, I'm using it but it's coming down a few more passes and uh, we should have it down and then I'll start using uh, an orbital on the finishing so um, there's another look at uh, some of the polishing I'm now going to try and get as close to the moulding just there uh, as I can because where they've masked it off and pulled it back really the painting it's never been polished or anything so I'm, I'm going to try and get right into the edge with the mini polisher See if we're achieving anything. And that's doing the job nicely. So I'm just going to reload my pad. I'm using, for cutting purposes, I'm using the Menzerna 300. And it only needs a little dab. I don't want it flicking everywhere, although it still will. And I'm just going to continue to do a long edge. Yeah, and that's doing exactly what I want it to do. So, handy little machine, it is a polishing machine, it's not a drill. Um, it, you can also put a two inch backing plate on and use it as a two inch, so it's a great little tool. Um, very useful when you're trying to do jobs like this. Right, I'll see you later. Just been nibbing some of the uh, I spots out of this uh, paintwork and I'm just gonna start polishing see if we can't get uh, a bit crisper the top is starting to look more respectable as is this uh, flute in the door and then we're gonna start there But in general, started to look quite nice. I'm sure it'll look even better out in the sunlight. This is still having its stages done, so you can still see some uh, flares of light.
because that's where the rotary's left in. That'll be took care of in the third stage. But, uh, this is about to have its first stages. Big cut. All right then, let's get on. Well, the door's coming along nicely. Still got some imperfections in the paint. I can't flat all of them out. This has still got to have the final stage, so it should be a little bit clearer when that's done. But uh, got all the uh, scratches out, and obviously uh, flatted the uh, polished the flatting marks off at the lump. And then we've got to move on to this side of the door that still looks absolutely rubbish. But uh, it's coming on, it'll look right when it's done. Right then, I'll see you on the next one.